Hey, Monty, how are you? Doing well, John. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, must uh, you've had a really, really interesting, exciting night, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. You called it. Um, I was going to ask you because uh, uh, you know uh, we we heard from Taylor a bit, but do you have any plans for the money? That's a good chunk of change. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I, I definitely want to uh, begin working on setting up myself to you know set up my own financial freedom, but. Right. As much as I possibly can, I, I want to set my parents up because they're the reason why I am the man that I am. And they're the reason, you know, why I've been so motivated to get as far as I possibly could in this game to, to honor them for the unconditional love that they've given me throughout my life. Um, so that's a huge part of the plans. But for me, if you want specifics, man, I'm, I'm looking to start my own podcast. Uh, so I'm sure that a decent amount of money will go into branding and marketing and, you know, equipment for all of that sort of stuff. So uh, stay tuned. But that's that's in the works. Now, looking at how tonight's jury vote uh, went, one, do you regret taking Turner and two, what was your rationale for doing so? What kind of factors were you weighing in your mind when you had because that was a pretty tough decision? Yeah, it was. And, and you said taking Turner, but I'm assuming you meant Taylor. So, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, no problem. Just want to make sure. Um, yeah. So, the, you know, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I was thinking. Um, as far as Turner and myself, I thought our games were very similar um, as far as our resumes from a competition standpoint and also from the big moves that we've made. But I thought that he he would outscore me in the jury with the fact that he's made so many more big moves than me. I mean, he took out Amira, he took out Kyle, took out Michael on his HOH, even though I won the veto. Um, so I thought sitting next to him, uh, the jury would just be a little bit more conflicted about what right. would be the separator there. Whereas with Taylor, I thought that there was a, a lot more margin with our, um, our resumes as far as from a competitive standpoint, how many times we've been on the block, the big threats that we've, um, you know, taken out throughout the season. I, I really toted those three things pretty hard and, and I thought in my speech, it came across pretty uh, effective, but um, you know, some thing keep popping up. All right. Uh, but either way, um, that, that's what, that was my thinking there. I, I probably, you know, just overlooked the, the ability that she has to connect with the jury and also her story. Cause I believe that her speech really resonated with the jury and right. she did a great job of um you know hammering home the importance of the vote and what the jury members had in their hands in that power to vote for her to to, to win now you were obviously uh, both from like you know a physical standpoint and a mental standpoint you were a threat from the very beginning of the game what was your strategy to manage that threat level because you did a really good job at it yeah i mean i i think um i think for me I wasn't, I would never say that I threw any competitions. Um, I never had that perspective because I just felt like, okay, I have to give it my all because if, if, if I at least win an HOH early, I can form some relationships, uh, start to get a read on people in the house and, and move on from there. Um, so winning one HOH uh, on the fourth week of the season, I thought was decent timing and, you know, a good way to sort of set myself up from there. Right. But, Shortly thereafter, I, I mean, I was a target um, to certain people in the house, uh, especially to those outside of my alliance because of, you know, some social things that had happened. But I think for me, it's just not panicking, man, like just staying even keel, just being true to myself, not trying to, you know, cover up for lies with lies on top of lies. Yeah. Like this was a very smart cast. So people got wind of things and people got wind of you being dishonest and it spread like wildfire. And that's usually what led to people's eviction. So, um, yeah, I think that was my perspective was just trying to stay as, you know, even keel as possible and not create too much news about myself. <laughs> yeah. Now, did it really surprise you that, you know, um, you weren't really targeted as the game progressed? It's, it's almost like, you know, people didn't nominate you. They didn't target you. What do you think was going through their minds? Did they just have bigger fish to fry, or 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 were the, there was bigger threats around? Like how? Why didn't they target you more earlier than they did? A hundred percent. I think that Michael was definitely a standout player. I mean, this guy has to be the best big brother competitor I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. The, yeah. the man beat all of us uh, in these competitions 
by such huge margins that it, it almost did look fair sometimes. But um, I think that was one thing that I had on my side was Michael was sort of my shield in, in that, right. right? Because of the fact that he was winning competitions early and often. Um, but yeah, I, I think also, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else had, had sort of went down, but I, I just don't think that it was, I, I just don't think that I was that prevalent of a threat to people because I hadn't won enough competitions to make myself a threat. Yeah. And on top of that, the reality is, I got fortunate enough to, you know, work with Alliance members that kept winning HOHs. Every <laughs> yeah. so, you know, it, I, if I wasn't a threat to my Alliance, then I was fine. So um, I, I think that was just a fortunate way it played out. Now we saw you, um, you know, your interaction with Kyle. I mean, you were upset with him at first and then you kind of like a big brother took him aside and kind of showed some patience and understanding. And we showed we saw you question Brittany too about the timing of her and Michael's revelation, all about what Kyle was thinking. Looking back at everything, and you've been able to, I assume you've been able to ponder for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was a strategy? Why or why not? What is your perception of what happened? Well, here's my thing, John. I um whether it was strategy or not, I just I felt when we had that conversation in the living room where yeah. everything was aired out yeah I'm, I'm glad you guys got to see that but yeah. in that conversation um I think Brittany had mentioned something around it not being good for their game to share that information when they did mm -hmm. and in my mind that that raised a red flag because yeah. Michael just won the power of veto so he's safe he's going to take down Brittany which he did right yeah. it's not like he took down Taylor so in that right they're both safe for that week and now they're putting the house in a situation where everybody's aware of, you know, some pretty negative stuff about Kyle. Right. And now he's an immediate target that Turner would be, it would be foolish for him not to put him up after finding all of this information out. So, you know, in, in, in my, in my head, I deduced from that. Okay. I was in big brochella with them the week before they didn't say anything to Taylor and myself. They didn't say anything before the house split it just seemed like the timing just seemed too mm -hmm. coincidental for it to be, yeah. uh, you know, an honest sharing of information to help, you know, the house understand something about. No, it, to me, it just it became very clear. So I still feel that way. And um, I do not like that they, they took that approach. Right. Um, but the worst thing about it was that they they tried to say things about it not being good for their game when to me it was clearly perfect for their game. And virtually it, it may have even helped my game out because who yeah. knows, maybe I would have been a replacement nominee. Um, so from a game perspective, it definitely served its purpose. Well, like I said, you got, you know, you in particular really dealt with it, you know, uh, very civilly, had a lot of patience for Kyle. And um, it, 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 was, it was nice to see some positivity come out of a negative thing. And so one final question for you, Monty, do you think the jury picked the best player this year? <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's a good question, John. Um, I will always be an advocate for myself. Yeah. I look back at everything that I did this season from a game perspective, from a social perspective, taking out big threats, everything that I said in my speech, I think I did everything that I possibly could to call myself the best the best player remaining. Yeah. Um, I stand by that. If the jury felt otherwise, then that is their business. Yeah. And I believe that Taylor's speech and her ability to communicate also is um, a very strong testament to her game and who she is as a person. So I don't think that that should be discounted. And the fact that she was able to convince that jury to <laughs> vote for her eight to one I mean, she was she played a pretty damn good game in order for that to happen. So um, props to her um, that that's just how I feel about it.